So now let us do the maximum drum method as I saying here that this is one can show that the maximum drum method is bounded and a very rigorous bound. The bound is that means you know there is this quantity Pn which is very small one can show that maximum term method and the remainder you know uh, and remainder goes to 0. So now I want to take and take the uh, replace the partition function by logarithmic term. So what I am going to do now I am going to take the that ML star. So I am not going to do the sum now. I am going to replace that by 1 ML star that ML star that particular distribution which maximizes these things. So, I do not have the sum anymore. So, this is the quantity I have to maximize right clear. So, now we do that. So, this is the maximum term method. So, I take this is the mistake I said I do not know how these mistakes come this should not be there anymore because we are just maximizing ML star. Uh, so, now I take the log of that when I take the log of that, now I have to have the with the constraint that ML equal to N. So, log of that you can have all this uh, star ML star minus L ML 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 sum over ML is N. So, this quantity is here and this is then VBL to the power ML all these things. You can do, uh, check it and you will find that. Apply now maximum term method with the constraint that is why that extra N, N will become and then you get this quantity it will still be z with the bracket lml minus n n does go out lml remain and then i put it as a ln z the my uh, my lagrangian multiplier uh, take the notation ln z knowing that what will come later and then i take with respect to ml and that would this ml lml remember that is a constraint that you have to be n that's why it is there and then you get this quantity from here ln ml ln z then you as I said I put it by hand as a Lagrangian multiplier ln z ml star v b l to the power z l. These come from there everywhere it should have been ml star actually like the, it should be star here, it should be star here, uh, it should be star here. I can try to do that with certain luck and k b t should be lower case this all should be star ml star. So, this is right here, but everywhere it will be ml star. Uh, the ml star is that. So, now uh, you understand the details and you also understand the uh, the grand picture. So, n. So, one, once I get that I multiply it I know that must satisfy n, I do that hit by L and do it, then I get n, I get sum over V L V L z to the power L, then I get density equal to L V L z to the power L. This is a very important, very important equation, correct? right. So, this is the this is this all right ok. Now, I have partition function like that I take log of that then I can now calculate the free energy free energy in terms of my ML star. I know my ML star my ML star is this quantity here right. I know my ML star now partition function does not have the sum this is correct. Then I can calculate the free energy by ML star coming out the ln of that VBL and this term believe me this is all this term is here. And then I can get the pressure by taking derivative of that. Are you following the thread or you are losing? Okay. Then uh, right now if you go into the very detail of the equations you will get lost this you can check it up and it will take me one probably 
half an hour more to do that. So, I do not want to do that and it is probably since these are details of uh, a keeping at that level of uh, probably these are not details you can do it because it will take you 10 minutes to do it, but you can do it. So, that goes inside and I go in I do that uh, there are these two terms here L n z and L n z will go to 0 d d v, but I have this term left v b l term left. So, I take d d v there v b l. So, then I get pressure doing that is k b t b l 0. So, pressure k should be lower case p by k b t is this second quantity. So, these two together are called the cluster integrals, the cluster expansion sorry. So, when you call a mere cluster expansion, this is the thing. Is really a matter of a choice and these are exact. The, uh, one can do probably somewhat simpler way through the uh, um, grand canonical ensemble, but there are some results what you will not get from there. Okay. So, this now as I was saying the game plan now is to eliminate uh, viscous um, uh, fugacity from these expansions both are exact believe me that. Elimination of fugacity from here gives you another uh, infinite series that infinite series is the following. And this is a varial series that is one of the things you taught in your on, uh, high school also. The pressure is expanded in density, first term is the second varial coefficient which will show is exactly given by F2 term of air cluster expansion. F2 term is an integral over interaction interatomic potential intermolecular potential. So, now from the historically from B2 the interaction potential the first force field was derived from B2 because it was done after Mayer did. One finds that second video I can get the second video coefficient how I plot pressure versus density and this is the ideal gas. But if as interactions become important, I see this starts deviating. So, I know experimentally this quantity and I know fast part of deviating is very temperature dependent. Like high temperature it is like this, low temperature is like that. So, I from there I fitting, I get the temperature dependence of second virial coefficient. And I will now show you the second virial coefficient is the integral over the first irreducible cluster integral or B2, okay. Second virial coefficient, okay. So, now, so I am going a little bit back and forth to give you the understanding of what is going on, okay. This will not need immediately, but uh, very important. So, what may I did then? These B's that you have done are called reducible cluster integrals. These are with the definition given here. These are integrals. However, as we know that this cannot be reduced any further, but this can be reduced. So, now we think is it possible for me to express B L following the same logic 
that I can now say okay, I have a cluster, whose weight I have given as BL, that weight now, that particles now, I can now define this quantity as 1, it is constructed of 2 bonds, if of them are same bond, but this is a different thing. So, can I further decompose this group of clusters into this quantity and this quantity, given that this is irreducible. And that was the next thing that may have did reduction in terms of irreducible cluster integral. Now, he said okay, let me define these are the fundamental quantities. These uh, as this I cannot reduce any further, these and these are the quantities. This actually should have one more because it should have the one without a bond, okay, that somehow is not given here. So, this one now I define, this is not kappa, this is k, k beta k if, if this volume, this quantity exactly define the similar way as we did before. We can do the exactly same thing that I now want to distribute in my ML or NL, how many of them are this kind and how many are of that kind. So, we do the exactly same analysis we did before and you get slightly different expression, but you can show that it goes over the further decomposition and this however has an approximation. In the process of going this approximation that you have to assume that these are um, volume independent, only then this uh, reduction can be done and that turned out to be very important limitation in this theory which made the theory more uh, questionable at high density, okay. So, I will not spend too much time on this, if I want to do it, I will do it later, but right now I am going to do something else that, oh, so this is the irreducible cluster integral. So, now my aim is to show this quantity is the second virial coefficient, this quantity is the third virial coefficient and sum of all these things are the fourth virial coefficient. And as I told you, these are important historically and also for force field development even today. So, with time priorities have changed, there is that huge amount of effort at one time went to get these integrals, really huge amount of work went and uh, that succeeded to some extent, but not to a great extent. So, basic idea is that this is the thing and then the, there is a reduction, you can, there is a distinction you should know, beta 1 is 2 particle. So, beta 1 is first of the reducible uh, integral that is good gives on to B2. So, B3 is the three, the three particle clusters. So, this has two of these, but there is one stands out which is beta 2. So, when I think of B3, I have B3 is decomposed, that is how it was done. The way I always do or you can always do, you can always, I never do it this way. I always write down the one, uh, two particle, then I do the three particle, then I go to four particle, then I see the pattern. That is how I did it, BS. That does not come from there that come from these de de definitions. Uh, so, there is the three part of uh, A will come, three of them I think three factorial three will, they are all the same value, three, three factorial cancels the three I think you are left with two. That that is uh, work it out, but as far as I remember one was three factorial into three and then you left at this two. Uh, and here however nothing is there, so the three comes in because the three, three of them are not there. That is why you get a three factor here. But let me say something very interesting. So, this part was done by Mayer. Now, Mayer had a very, very uh, smart wife. You might be knowing called Gopat Mayer, Maria Gopat Mayer. So, they were in Gottingen and Maria Gopat Mayer was the daughter of a professor. She was very beautiful 
and very smart. So, they are all those people who are there, George Gamow and all the, all the people, um, Mayor, they are go, gone to Gottingen to study. So, finally, uh, Joseph Mayer um, managed to uh, convince her and marry her and they brought her to uh, they were first in job in Columbia. Those days, women's faculty position was very difficult. So, Maria Gopat Mayer did not get a faculty position. She was just, I do not think she was probably not even paid, but she is, but she was incredibly smart. So, she is, so while Mayer did the first part, this part was done by Maria Gopat Mayer and that is acknowledged in Mayer. So, they wrote a book of StatMac, which is Mayer and Mayer, very famous statistical mechanics books. Much of the things are taken from that book. Also, the Patria, RK Patria has a good job and my book also, I hope the equations are all correct. Uh, that was done by Maria Gopat Mayer. Then another interesting thing happened. Sometime later, there is a PhD student of Mayer called Stockmayer, who was very famous. Stockmayer did the theory of sol gel transition when the polymers get together and form a gel. There is a difficult combinatorics of this kind, and that was also done uh, by Gopat Mayer. And uh, Stockmayer wrote the paper and acknowledged the contribution of Gopat Mayer in that theory. And uh, in Chicago, then they came. Even then, uh, Gopat Mayer didn't have a didn't have any uh, office. So in the uh, in the uh, first floor or ground floor, American first floor or ground floor, in James Frank Institute, I think the she probably had in the Enrico Fermi part, which is demolished all these things now, except the way that Fermi did the nuclear chain reaction. That part is on the cap, and the capsule is there. There is a long hallway and in the hallway on site they put a desk and uh, a chair and Maria Gopat Mayer used to sit on the hallway and when they would be, so Farmi, so people know his mayor's uh, wife. So once Farmi was going uh, there and uh, Maria Gopat Mayer was doing some calculations, so Farmi stopped and uh, asked what is she doing. He said, oh, I am trying to develop a theory of nuclear shell theory. Fermi said, ah, that is very interesting. I was thinking about it. You know, it should be something like Bohr's theory, you know, the same kind of thing. And that gave Maria Gopat Mayer presumably the basic idea, which went on to do in the, the famous theory of nuclear shell, which they got the Nobel Prize uh, ultimately. So, there are all these stories which are uh, hangs around in, in famous places like this James Frank Institute in Rico Fermi University of Chicago or everywhere else for example. Like you, when you go to Harvard, you hear the chemistry department, lot of lot of beautiful stories about uh, Bob Woodward who is one of the, the father of organic chemistry, but whatever. So now, uh, le let me go back and forth little bit. Now, uh, so these are the integrals. The same as with a factor of 2, same as the uh, second of reducible cross tentacles, there is the first of reducible tentacles, there is this difference of 1 between them, but this is the integral you have to remember. So, it is f12, and remember f12 is mayor a function. So, f12 is this quantity e to the power minus beta u12 r minus 1. So, then beta 1 dr right and then that is dr uh, 4 pi r square beta u r minus 1 ok. So, there is a factor of volume in front. So, this is a strongly temperature dependence that comes from beta, 4 pi comes out 0 to infinity, 1 pi 4 pi v, right. Uh, yeah, 4 pi v. So, 
this is the uh, expression of my first irreducible cross integral which is also v2 by 2. Now I will show you how that happens and we will stop after that. Uh, before that one tiny little bit that one can go and calculate the average number of these clusters by using this there is a what turned out is very powerful that this exact partition function is nothing but a class of polynomials called Bell polynomials. A very powerful polynomials used the famous mathematician Bell that has been used in many ways particularly in study of zeros of polynomials. That polynomial allows you to write a recursion relation it is a just bit of good luck. Now if I can write this then if you can give me the uh, z1 and then give me next one I can get the higher level partition function. So I can construct this called recursion relation. The input of course are the bl plus 1. So if I have that I can construct this partition function. If I can construct the partition function I can calculate what is the average number of clusters in the particle by using this as the weight, uh, this as the weight. So this is the weight of a one, uh, of, a, of a one particular distribution, right. If I have the partition function, then I calculate that weight. I am not going to get into the details of that, but then you can now say, okay, LML is the number of clusters LML is number of particles in size of cluster L. ML is the number of clusters of size L. Each of them have L. So LML is the number of particles in cluster of size L. Now we plot it against L by N. N is total number of particle. L is the size of the cluster. Then you find when you have low high temperature then this gas goes to be 0. But when you lower the temperature, you find a second peak appears. That second peak is the is the is the liquid. So a second big cluster appears with L by n close to 1, slightly less than 1, maybe at 0.8. So as you hit the coexistence, this peak signals the appearance of a macroscopic cluster in the system. So liquid is envisaged in Mayat's theory as a macroscopic cluster, okay. So when you cool down like nitrogen we have, I cool it down and make the density large, then the particles come close to each other, they all start interacting. I call a system a liquid when the, all the particles are interacting with each other or one of them interacting many others. But if a 1 is interacting with say 10, which is a good number actually, then it is correct, almost correct number, then the neighbors of that, my 10 neighbors, they are interacting with another 10, then another 10. So liquid means when the particles are all talking with each other or molecules are talking. That means in this description they are part of the same cluster. They are talking with each other means they are connected by a bond. This is not a chemical bond, the bonds are breaking and forming, but they are interacting. So liquid is that not each particle does need not interact with everybody, okay. So this is the, again I repeat, ML is number of particles in cluster of size L, LML is the, then ML is number of clusters of size L, LML is number of particles in that cluster. Okay, and then this is L equal to small one or so one by n equal to very small. That are the gas, the small clusters. When they are large, this goes close to a, when L is close to n. That means a gigantic macroscopic clusters. This close to one, maybe 0.8 or so. So low temperature, this peak appears. 
high temperature, there is no peak. Huh? This is the low temperature. Yeah, high temperature, I should have just like this. Huh? So that should have been there and it is not there. So this is a nice physical picture that comes. As I told you, ideal gas does not form liquid. Liquid forms because of interactions and that interaction lowest level is the second or third visual coefficients. That is not perfect theory by any means. This theory to uh, take you all uh, essentially to a picture and uh, how interactions are taken into account, but that is the universal scheme. You know. All other theories flew from that. So, if I take now L, L, M, L and then L by N, then as she asked in the high temperature gas phase, this is just like this. I lower the temperature, increase the density, it becomes like that. Then finally, that appears. This is one. Okay. So this is this is the pure ga gas, no liquid. Large clusters are appearing. Then at the coexistence, you have lots of gas and then also one gigantic cluster. So if I plot this thing as pressure versus density, then this is like that, which is here. Then it becomes more like that, which is this one and then it becomes. So this one is this one, gas and liquid are together, this is the coexistence. So you have one gigantic cluster which is the liquid, it is amazing when your liquid is in an equilibrium with a vapor phase just like in glass of water, then in one with the liquid you have this um, avocado number of particles interacting with each other. But your liquid, your gas is just cluster of two or three. There is a huge separation and one is stabilized by entropy which is your gas, one is uh, largely stabilized by your uh, enthalpy which is this phase. And this really took huge amount of time for people to describe this phase transition, huge amount of money. I always consider phase transition is where almost all our concepts came including high energy physics because that is where came the order parameter, that is where came the interactions among atoms and molecules. So phase transition is the one everybody should study. Uh, the free energy diagram and all these things, even our chemical kinetics is deeply more, deeply a, though independently it was developed in the beginning. Now, uh, one little bit because uh, we, I do not know when you will meet first, one little bit the video expansion from Mayer's theory. So then I go to the partition function and I say okay, I expand this, this expansion and I start putting my V's together, I take only the, this term, then we know n into n minus 1, 2 of them. I will do rest of the integrals, I give it to the power n minus 2, correct? There are only two I cannot do, which two are kept here. They are, they are vector integrals. Then I change the center of mass to what? One volume comes out. This is my mayor a function, actually it should be u. However, now I take this v out, it becomes v n minus 1, large n limit. I can neglect this, I have n square by 2 and then I bring it here, take Vn out, 1 by V comes here, it becomes 1, n square beta 1 by V, 
beta 1 as a, a, a volume term okay and uh, in general so this you can this is the partition function now i take this tiny little bit of partition function only the this part tiny little bit i just looking at a correction that correction so, so i am i am interested in this part i am interested in this part or this part i am i am not doing this one but i am doing a tiny little part to make it simple a full uh, derivation can be done that will be a little complex so i am not doing it so now i am going to do that put that back in my partition function this zn i put it back in my um, free energy this definition then i log this is a large volume and nv and uh, then i take this derivative and then this becomes 1 over v that becomes 1 here and that derivative gives uh, it do, do this this is suddenly de developed but at the end of the day this is n by v by n so pv by n kvt you get exactly from here you get exactly this term so this is the first of an expansion so pv by n kvt is this is the real series so now i identify v2 second real coefficient is minus beta 1 by 2 <laughs> this quantity from minus beta 1 by 2 and this is then my microscopic expression of the second real coefficient except this is not v r is u so i think he of his used his notes and screwed up everything very nicely but this is what it stands now this is a beautiful expression second virial coefficient which describes this bending here is in terms of mayer cluster integral and this is a general expression one can derive and one little bit i can go to van der waals equation i can find out my virial coefficients this is a homework problem we always did you, you expand it pressure in terms of density and equate this thing you get the second virial coefficient third virial coefficient go back find out the betas then find out betas this is betas find out your mayer cluster integral which can be done by use a very similar recursion relation so you can construct whole statistical mechanics that lies under van der waals and that that has been done so we stop here today there are some limitations one of the major limitation is that when one goes to that level this is only temperature dependent you in doing these integrals the way defined only when volume dependence of those integrals are neglected and that is the so this is the it, it does not describe because it diverges there and it does not describe the liquid state so mayer theory does not work in the liquids but it describes how liquid forms it describes how singularity develops and it describes how which singularity is at the affair so what we will do now after this we will do landau theory this is the theory of phase tensor i am uh, hurrying a little bit any questions you quickly ask yes That's a very serious. Yeah. <laughs> quantitative change. This part is quantitatively exact. Correct. No. Say, for example, when you go to liquids, then something fundamentally different appears here. For that you need infinite number of them and that part where it breaks down. But it as I said here, it reproduces the complete flattening, it reproduces this part. But then it does not because for that you know people have done little better and corrected this theory. But people are quite happy with this part that it starting from an interaction potential to see how 
a temperature dependent behavior emerging was really quite satisfying. And the concept of clusters, we don't want to do percolation. This is the way after that percolation theory was done, sol gel transition done. So, this played as a catalyst of development of hell lot of things. That is why historically in statistical mechanics, these things should not be ignored, Mayer's theory. People do not teach it because it is too complex as you have seen. And it, uh, so next we will do joint phase transition, I will explain little bit more. Okay, I think we will stop here today.